In this rather long-winded video, I'm going to assemble and paint Art of War Studios Avasa. So I'm going to read verbatim. I got a chance to talk to the owner of uh, Art of War Studios, and he gave me a little blurb on how they started. Uh, by his own words here, I started Art of War Studios in 2014 when my health prevented me from teaching. It was a real lucky overnight success story, and within a year, I'd asked my wife to quit her job to help me. Since then, we've been supplying mostly tokens and some terrain to the community. The community means a lot to us, so we focus on making sure that it's supported. Our motto is useful, affordable, pretty, in that order. Our products should perform a useful function, be as affordable as possible, and look as good as possible. That way we're actually providing something that people will genuinely find improves their games. We also help out with prize support for events, charity raffles, and even bulk orders for clubs. Our gaming community needs to work together to grow, to grow and continue. So we always prioritize it. We're based out of a barn in the middle of Kent in the UK. We design, manufacture, and fulfill all of our products ourselves with no outsourcing. It's hard work, but it's something we love doing, and it beats teaching. So to touch on a couple of things here, I, the, the owner is super nice, um, and I can totally 100% get behind the motto, useful, affordable, pretty in that order, because obviously you want your terrain to be useful, uh, you want it to be affordable and pretty. And as you can see from these stock images, um, this is how the terrain looks once it's finally assembled. And you can be as basic with the paint job or as elaborate as you wish. So in the video here, I'm going to focus on um, a couple of tips, tricks, some things that I've learned in the past from my own experience and from other YouTubers. Uh, I pulled heavily from Mel the Terrain Tutor on this one and a little bit from midwinter minis as well um, I had originally thought of kind of weathering the terrain but for this video I think I'm just gonna build everything as is and then step back in later if I want to do anything else so without a fur further ado let's uh, build assemble and paint alright so step one here uh, we're going to build one of the large buildings now I learned this from Mel the terrain tutor uh, the first thing you need to do is wipe the boards down with a slightly damp cloth because of all of the uh, the residue from the cutting now it doesn't take but a few minutes to wipe each board before you start punching things out um, each of the kits that I that I received from him has uh, in, in each bag for the buildings has two sets of buildings with two sets of the uh, small accessories as well so they all of this stuff pops off of the sprue no problem now you want to be careful when removing these pieces um, I learned later that the little strip in between is actually not even necessary so I was worried because I had broken a couple of them as you can see uh, but the strip is is just a piece of you know random wood uh, make sure that as you're doing this, you line everything up and get the right boards, you know, the right pieces to the right uh, backings. Um, each of the, the stairwell looking ones go on the blank. The, you know, the uh, windows go to the windows and the doors go to the doors. Now, uh, what I'm doing here is I put a little bit of PVA glue in each of the little slots. And then again from Mel, uh, I take a little bit of water on an old brush and I kind of push the glue that, sp that spreads out across the holes and that reinforces it makes it a little bit stronger and it assists with the um, you know the terrain being a little more solid uh, now the I don't use a whole lot of PVA glue you don't have to slather it just a little bit and also uh, so I always don't dry fit because you will have an issue getting this back apart. What we're going to do is we're going to paint this first and then we're going to assemble. Um, it, it makes it much easier to get all of the resources if you spray it first and then assemble it. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and pop over. This is where I had done a Zenithal Prime. First I hit it in dark blue and then I hit it from the tops with a sage color. And all of the outer walls I left white, just like in the um, in the vid in the uh, the pictures. 
Um, I am also going to hit all of the exposed areas with a wash. Now, I just went through surgery, so I can't open my wash bottle, and neither can my wife. So I am going to have to use my expensive no oil for this, which is fine. It's, you know, it's nothing too crazy. Now, uh, don't forget that at the top, there is a swath at the top, and also the circuitry-looking areas are going to be exposed as well. Um, each of the center sections, whether it's a door or whatnot, need to be painted. Now, I had forgotten that the lip on these is exposed, so I did not paint the tops of the backs of the white. So I had to blue tape this one piece and go back and spray it again. So I'm, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take all these back and, and spray them. Now for this, um, this first one, I decided to paint the outer edge green and blue. So I'm just blue taping off each of the little areas in the center and then just kind of cutting a little bit of blue tape so I can get the corners without too much of an issue. Um, this is technically not really a necessary step. You can leave these one color. You could color the whole thing, uh, you know, dark color or white color or whatnot. But I've decided to go ahead and, uh, you know, just color them myself. And you know, make it a little, make a little bit of variation here. So I, I cut a corner piece for each of these. You know, I make a two small cuts on the blue tape, as you can see here, and then I put that tape over each corner. That makes it a little easier. Now the subsequent ones, I left the the outer edge white, and I painted the center. And I think actually, in hindsight, I like that better than the first one. Now, as you can see, I've also hit that with a wash. So all of these are now washed, and uh, the first piece is assembled. Um, now, putting these together, again, you don't want to slather it with glue, but you do want to put a little bit of PVA, and you want to kind of stick it together. All right. Now, and then uh, for the centerpiece here, you put some glue on all the outer edges, and then stick it right on top. Now it's it's best that you do these all at the same time. Don't wait for one to dry because you're gonna have to make adjustments. Now you can do what I'm doing here and you can just by hand kind of piece it together and uh, put it, you know, kind of tighten it up. Just don't put too much pressure on it because it will pop if you put too much. And then take your wet brush, well, let's let's not say wet, your slightly moist brush because I love that word and just mop up a little bit of the glue, you know, put it back in the recesses there and we'll keep it all together. Now, um, that was my test run. Now, what I'm doing here is I, I'm putting a little bit of glue, just a little bit on the insides to make it a little sturdier. I don't expect that this train is going to take much abuse, but honestly, it's very sturdy and I think it could potentially take some abuse. So each of these, as you can see, uh, it's got the little slats on the back. It's it's like a uh, almost like a blast shield or you know a, a, sh a shield behind there. You can pop those out if you wish. I decided to leave them in. Uh, now here, as I said earlier, this is where I blue tape off the outer edges to leave the outer edges white and paint the inner part blue and green. And th this uh, it looks taxing and time consuming, but it actually does not take much effort. All you have to do is just be super careful about lining it up and the tape is kind of flexible. So if you put it down and then just kind of, you know, manipulate it around as you go, I left the little black seam slightly exposed on the other side of the tape. And you can see the satisfying tape peel. And honestly, like I said, I think I like the inner painted blue and, and green more than I like the outer. Um, now here is another example of me putting together one of the big buildings. Uh, this is just like a, a dry fit and you can see where everything puts, sits together um, and it, it's easy enough to figure out where you put the glue because you don't need to put the glue on all of the outer edges. Okay, If you do that you're going to have glue on the outside of the building and you definitely don't want that because it globs up and it looks terrible. So once again, a little bit of glue on the right spots, stick it together, a little bit of glue on the right spots, this time twice because this is the last one, 
And then once you get all that glue on, just a little bit, it, it just a little bit will do you. Uh, you stick it together. You put the glue on the outer edge. And then you put the top on. Simple enough. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Now, uh, one thing I do want to note, um, I did make a couple of changes here to... Um, how I was assembling these models. Uh, nothing too crazy, uh, but what I started doing is uh, on, on the next models, and you'll see here in, a, in an example, um, I actually started putting rubber bands around the edges. Now if you do it this way, one thing I will note, these models, these buildings are supposed to stack together. Okay, you can actually stick the inside or they, you could stick the one building on top of the on top of the other, and they fit together. They slot together. It's brilliant. But if you do this with the rubber bands, they will be a little tighter. All right. So I th I don't think I'm going to do that with the rest of them. Uh, one thing I also did, and this is not going to interfere with you putting the buildings together, is I started putting glue on the inner edges to kind of reinforce everything. Just like with caulking, I use the tip of the glue of the applicator to kind of smooth everything out and make sure there are no big pools of glue in there. Uh, moving on, uh, these are some of the additional scenic pieces, some of the greebles and whatnot. Uh, this is actually what I'm popping out is the uh, solar panels. So the solar panels, each of the sprues for the buildings comes with um, or the, the building sets comes with one garbage can, uh, one air conditioning unit, and three solar panels that can be put on top of the buildings. It's kind of meant that way. So I painted the, um, the wires a, co a coffee bean, the same I used for my war, war cry terrain. I painted the little cylinder there gray, and I painted the uh, all of the edge pieces and the panels themselves white. And for all of this, I'm just using regular Krylon spray. All right, just regular old Krylon matte spray paint. Um, I am going to go back on these solar panels and I'm going to put some, maybe some blue, make them kind of shiny on the little hex pieces. But as you can see, plain and simple, really, really easy to assemble. Um, and I use the same trick of using a slightly moist brush to push some of that PVA around and get it into the creases and kind of strengthen the um, bond. Now, as you can see, there are the three of them. Uh, one of them did get a little bit uh, more paint in the recesses than I wanted. I was too heavy with the spray can. Uh, the next thing I'm going to put together is the bench. The bench is super, super duper easy. It's literally four parts. Two sides, uh, two um, two little bench pieces, and you're done. Um, now, when you're putting pieces together like this, you have to kind of line up all of the sides and make sure that the, sl the slots go correctly. Um, the next piece I will cover is the garbage can. Now, this is where it starts getting a little more in-depth. You have to make sure you put everything in the right order. Obviously, Read the instructions several times before you start. I made the mistake of not reading the instructions all the way on one piece, and we'll get, or actually two pieces, and we will get to that a little bit later when we start looking at the balconies and things like that. So this one is fairly simple. Uh, what I did here is I just put one side together. And then the, the center piece, now each of the side pieces have one, one side there that has like an engraving on it. That's how you know that's the outside. The center piece there that goes between the two cans has no decorations on it. So that's how you know it's the center piece. So I put each side together <clears throat> with all of the little individual pieces. And then I kind of lined up all the little the tabs in the slots and pushed it together. And once again, moist brush, a little bit of brush work, get all that glue, you know, make sure it doesn't glob up, and then throw some paint on it. So I painted it, I washed it, and this is just an example of, of how I'm going to make things a little, uh, a little more detailed at, down the line as I go back and, and put some more paint on these things. Um, I actually took some he Hexwraith Flame and some uh, Reaper's 
um, it's like a dungeon slime and I just made some like green uh, nastiness coming out of that trash can there and I, I just kind of pulled it around let what and while the hex wraith flame was wet I dropped some of this dungeon slime into it and just kind of let it mix together and uh, you know, it, it, it ended up looking really good because it, it looks kind of nasty and grody and it, it, it just it looks great. I, I like the way it turned out. It's very simple. It only took me a few seconds for each step. I mean, it, it, at most, it took me a minute or two for all of this. The, the trash can was probably one of the more simple builds. And there's how it looks like, you know, once everything is done. The detail work on this is, is good. It, the The little engravings are great. Uh, this one <clears throat> was kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, that is the little air conditioner unit for the top. Now, you have to be sure, as I'm pointing out, each of these individual little pieces, you have to be certain that you're putting the right piece in the right spot. And as you can see, this is another thing I got from Mel. I'm using the back of an old brush to uh, make it easier to put to pop out each of these little pieces that go on the side. These, uh, the little pieces here, they go in a certain order. So make sure once again, read the instructions, take your time. Okay. There, there's no rush here. Take your time. That's the, the best advice that I can give anybody on this. Um, so each individual piece here, um, as you can see, I've taken the time to, uh, put each of the little four, you know, little nodule pieces in there and then you put the fan in and once again a little bit of water move it around make sure there are no big pools of PVA glue each of these pieces it, you can actually see where um, it's intuitive to put the glue usually what I'll do is I'll take the glue and I'll kind of brush it along the sides of each cut that way you know I don't have a big glob of glue kind of oozing out of each little each of the little divots each of the holes there now, um, on this piece, uh, there are a couple of different areas where you have to sort of put things together and kind of monkey them in. And then you, you basically put together all of the side panels. And once all of the outer panels are done, then you can assemble the rest of it. Now, this piece, I was going to get all detailed and put a bunch of different colors on it. But I decided for this one, I was just going to go really, really simple. And I ended up ended up just painting it like a, a dark metal silver um, but you can as I've demonstrated paint each of the individual little panels in different colors you know spruce it up a little bit but for these since it's just kind of decoration pieces I'm just gonna metal it up and then probably null and oil it maybe weather it a little bit you know put some uh, agrax or shade or whatnot on it um, but here I am dry fitting. Uh, now for this one, each of the little tabs has its own little, um, it, it's like a little half tab. So it, it's really easy to, to know what goes where because you're putting the little half tabs together. And then the outer pieces, of course, you put the full tab in. Uh, that was the easiest part. Now, the, what was kind of a pain in the butt uh, was getting this top piece on because you have to make sure that everything kind of lines up and that center piece there You got to make sure that big old tab gets in the right slot properly So it took me a minute to kind of monkey it together, but once again take your time Do not try and force it in there. Don't get over really creative with how much you know pressure you're putting in different areas this wood is rather delicate when it's on its own like that when it's just a, a piece with two little you know, two little tabs holding together. So just take your time and be careful. All right, moving on. Uh, now we're going to do um, the ladders and the um, balconies, bridges, and then uh, we'll move on to a couple other things after that. Now the ladders are the, honestly, probably the simplest thing you will put together in this whole kit. You literally just put two pieces on the side, glue it together, and you are done. Um, the balconies are a little more complex, and this is where I made my first mistake. Make sure you pay attention to which of the little pedestals or pillars go to which corner. Um, I'm kind of 
popping everything out right now and I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, I got it. No problem. You know, I, I just sort of, by this point, I had put together a bunch of the stuff and I was just ready to rock. And that just goes to show you, you got to be careful. So each of these little um, arrowhead looking pieces goes on the front corner where you see the two peg holes. Okay. And then each of the, uh, the smaller ones that only have the little two prongs on them go in the back. And then these pieces hold the, um, the side railings together. They hold the side railings on. All right. So that, that's fairly simple enough, right? What I did not know, and I'm glad that I didn't glue any of the side pieces together. I, I actually just kind of slotted them together and they were tight enough that it didn't require glue. Well, what I wasn't paying attention to is there are some of these little uh, posts and pillars that have two slots. So I was sitting there wondering why the heck are the side pieces there skewed? You know, I couldn't figure out why it wasn't going together. I actually cracked one of the little one of the little supports, and I, I thought to myself, okay, th there's got to be something wrong here because everything else that I had done to this point was just beautiful and seamless and wonderful. I did make the mistake of gluing those down. So I had to go back and very, very carefully crack that off and put it, you know, pull it apart and fix it. Um, as you can see here, I am reinforcing my mistake like an idiot. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the the balconies um, are not really that hard. There, there's a lot of pieces here, so it is a little tedious. But as you can see, this is me, you know, putting things together, putting, you know, putting all the all the stuff just happily, la la la. You know, why is it off? And th this is the point. Uh, you can see me kind of tinkering where it you know, it looks a little skewed and I'm trying to figure out why. Well, we'll, we'll go over that in just a second as I, as we get to the next piece of the video. But, um, you know, the, the balconies themselves are fairly simple. They just kind of slot onto the side of the buildings. There's, there's little slots there for each. Now the, the painting them does add a small modicum of resistance so if you're taking them in and out in and out in and out you are going to scratch up the paint uh, but that's easily fixable with just a little dab of acrylic you know nothing too crazy so you know it, just just be ready to see a little a couple of scrapes and scuffs here and there um, so the the bottom pieces uh, make sure that you orient these right um, the little the little uh, hooks there go on the side of the buildings. So they go on the inside, right? Just like that. Um, and you can see I just kind of put things together, show you how it works, show you how it looks. It looks great. Now, um, this is where I'm pointing out, and <laughs> this is where I pointed out that I had made a huge error. So luckily for me, I like I said, I only use a dab of glue, all right? It's going to reinforce it, but it's not going to make it impossible to get out and so once I once I got everything um, you know properly oriented properly put together I got the two prongs where the two prongs go and the one prongs where the one prongs go um, I fixed everything including the, the small pieces that I had broken put everything back together and it still looks good okay even after that mistake it still looks good not a problem so even if you do make a mistake it's MDF, a little bit of glue will do you just fine. It's not going to be that hard to fix. So, you know, here we go, reinforcing a little bit, making everything look pretty. And here we are moving on to the second one. Now, once again, on the second one, keep in mind, two prong. Now, this is everything painted. Um, as you can see on the first one, I just kind of put it together and painted it all white. The second one, I did the uh, two-tone method of Zenithal priming and made it kind of a, the blue green as the rest. Um, I, I was going to keep all of the large balconies white, but I think in hindsight, I'm going to do the same. Uh, this one. Okay. Moving on to the signs, the billboards. Now I'm going to keep that little piece there because it might actually make a, a, a decent, um, base for them, or maybe I can reuse them as a bridge or something like that. But, um, the, the signpost, or the, the billboards here are a little more complicated than everything else. It comes with a lot of small pieces 
and it comes with a lot of different parts that you have to put together and make sure that you get it all right. You can either uh, use the little pieces there to uh, have a sort of display on each side or you can put just another one of the hooks. You can also uh, use some of the um, little pieces there to, to make the sign attached to the side of a building or you can also use it to um, attach it to a stand. Now this is going to kill everybody's OCD. I am not using a ruler. I am freehanding this to prove a point. You can freehand this without too big of an issue because you are going to end up having to score the, the, the stickers just a little bit. Now I made the mistake here. Uh, I started using a black ruler or a, a, I'm sorry, a, I, I, I don't remember what that is. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, but I, I swapped off to a metal ruler because it was much easier to see the edges. And, um, you know, once you line it up, just line it up. And since you can't measure twice on this and cut once, just make sure you get everything lined up as best you can. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect because the decal, once you pull it off of that white, is actually clear. Okay, so it, it is going to be transparent and you will not notice a difference if there's a little piece, you know, that's that's off just a little bit. Uh, you will have to peel the backing off of the acrylic and there is also a clear plastic liner on the other side. So make sure you get both sides. Now for this, take your time once again. Find the best way to line it up for you. As you can see, I kind of had to play around with, with the different ways, but I ended up just taking a uh, straight up, just stick it on one side, line it up on the two edges, and push it across there. Now, I did not cut the sticker on the little divots on this one because it, it can just stick to the wood. All right, that's not too big of a deal. Um, I did, however, end up having to score it just a little bit when I put the uh, the locking the little locking pins on. Now this one, uh, these are the locking pins. Um, I decided to put this one permanently on a stand, a standalone stand because I love this picture, this like cyberpunk geisha looking picture. That is definitely going to be always a standalone thing for me. Uh, so you, you put the put the little pieces together, you put the two side, side rails there uh, with the center, and you kind of assemble everything, put everything together, and that is the stand. Easy enough, good to go. Now, the little centerpiece sticks there in that slot, and uh, what I started doing from there is just kind of uh, slowly assembling everything and putting everything together. I, dry, I did a couple of dry fits. This is a little complicated, okay? Make sure that as you're doing this, take your time, line it up. I had a couple of problems putting the little side pieces on, the little locking nuts on, uh, the little, they're not really nuts, but the little locking pieces. You have to literally put each of these pieces together, okay? You, you put the outer edge on one side, the outer edge on the, on the other side, and then you take each of those little uh, pieces, they're like little half moon almost pieces, and you have to stick it together. Now, as you can see on the bottom there, I used the little piece for the, that allows you to attach a pad on each side because I just think that's kind of cool. It's like a like one of those um, one of those LED signs that you can maybe change or interact with. Uh, now, as you can see, I'm kind of struggling here to get the piece in you do have to kind of finesse this all right but once you get the first two or three on everything starts to fall in place a little bit better and it gets a little bit easier to assemble so that's fairly simple enough um, it, it is again I encourage you take your time be gentle these pieces are super duper fragile. Make sure that if you're pushing on one of the sides that you have your fingers on, on, in there underneath that really thin piece of wood so you don't crack it. Um, if, you, if you look closely you can see I'm using my fingers on both sides 
and I'm using my thumb in the center and I'm pushing and I'm pushing very gently to get these in. Um, the signs themselves, these little terminals, I swapped over to using just a thin bead of super glue to stick them on. And I did end up leaving the, um, the uh, little adhesive tape on the other side to make it look like a little terminal screen. And I think I might keep it like that. Uh, now, as you can see here, there is the Cyber Geisha sign. Um, it is a little top heavy, so I, I think I am going to need a base for it. Uh, these signs work similar, as you can see. Uh, uh, this one is the one where when you put it together, you are going to have to score the um, the little sticker a little bit. Okay, You are going to have to cut it a hair just to make sure that when you put the locking pins on that you have enough enough wiggle room there for that little piece to allow you know the the piece for it to go together and it won't start crumpling up um, if you do get a crumple just cut it very gently and pull it off nobody will notice because that piece is always going to be underneath the little locking part uh, moving on to the bridges. The bridges were fairly simple. Again, this is another instance of make sure you're using the two prong and make sure you're using the right ones. You got to make sure that you're that you're paying attention to all of the parts and pieces that you have to have here. Um, with the bridges, it was fairly simple enough to. Um, Put, to, put together what you need are those those little side pieces and make sure you keep in mind not all of the side slats for the bridges the little, little the railing is on the same sprue there are some pieces on another sprue because obviously they couldn't fit it all together in one um, so as I usually do I get all the parts and pieces I need I count everything and make sure I got it again with these I did not glue the little pieces in. I did glue the stand into the the bridge itself, but I did not glue each of the individual little holsters. Um, I, I left those, uh, you know, open and, and ready to go. As you can see, here we go. This is the bridge itself. It kind of slots together, and just like the balcony, it slides right in, no issues. Now, um, on this one. I, what I decided to do is treat it just like the balconies and I decided to paint it up white and paint both of the individual sides green. Uh, on some of the subsequent buildings, as you see later, I'm going to change the color scheme a little bit and make, make kind of a variance because, you know, I, I don't want the whole, I don't want all the buildings to look the same. But just like with the balcony, uh, with the railing here, I decided just to put a little bit of glue on the bottom. I didn't put any on the sides, just enough to hold it in place snugly. And once I put everything together, then I went back and I once again used the um, a, a moist brush to smooth out any PVA that came leaking out of the sides. Anything that oozes out, make sure you just put it, you know, spread it out a little bit and again this will reinforce everything and I really got to thank Mel for that tip that's a great tip awesome tip it it, uh, it makes it very sturdy so as you can see here spread it out a little bit no problem and that's honestly what the bridge looks like in the end very simple very elegant though I, I really like the uh, decor on these things I like the little individual uh, engraving marks on these the you know the little slats it, it gives it character because i've seen some mdf buildings that oh yeah you know it's a building you can tell it's a building but there's really nothing on the outside to make it stand out make it pop i'm actually not panel lining any of this stuff i used a, a spray can of krylon and the paint itself just kind of shies away from those little individual um you know the the engraving areas I'm not really sure why it probably has something to do with surface tension I'm sure that you know Brent from Goobertown could probably tell me why it shies away from those areas um, but uh, you know it, it it ends up looking really nice especially with the white the edges look really crisp 
and I haven't had many issues with, except for the solar panels so far, I haven't had, I haven't had many issues with the white bleeding into those individual areas. Um, moving on to the stairs, I made sure to put all of the individual pieces together for each set. Um, the stairs were a little more complicated. Make sure you get everything together. Make sure you put it all in one spot. Make sure you keep it together and you know what goes to what. Now, each of these individual pieces, um, they go together in a certain way. The, getting the first set in is not a problem. You can just, you know, stick it in there, line it up, you know, peg in slot, you know, it, no problem. Getting the other side on is a bit of a challenge for these stairs, but it's obviously not impossible. You have to make sure that you line it up really, really well. And the way I was doing this is I would line up one, make sure it gets in there, and then I would individually go up the stairs. And I'm not pushing it in all the way until I get about halfway up, and then I start making sure that I'm that the bottom part is down and together. Uh, as you can see, you know I'm just giving a little bit of pressure, not a lot of pressure. Again, make sure you're very gentle with this stuff because if you if you monkey hand it, you can break it. Uh, for the side kind of the the side saddle staircase here same thing putting all the individual pieces in make sure the engraving side is up it makes it easy for you to put everything together you you know with the engrave the little engraving pieces being on every spot it makes it really really easy to get together without an issue second side again once again just a little bit of glue and make sure that you line everything up uh, very carefully Okay, this one was a little more hard to get together than the previous ones. I didn't glue any of the stairs. They actually stay together pretty well. Um, as you can see, once again, I'm using my fingers to kind of, you know, put each of the individual pieces into the slots. It, it does take some time. It takes patience as well. Okay, so you have to be patient. Now, also, another issue I had, as you can, if, if you look really hard, um, I had paint on my fingers, so it was kind of rubbing off onto the white. I'm not really worried about that. Now, the street vendor, uh, I pre-assembled the centerpiece because this one is kind of complicated as well. As you can see, I made everything kind of like the, the green, the blue, and the white, and I am dry fitting everything here, okay? There are a couple of places here where I um, started putting things together and I had to break it apart again because I had put the wrong piece together at the wrong time. Make sure you dry fit, watch this, do it in order, go slow. Make sure that you're not trying to get it done in, you know, break, at a breakneck pace because you will break this stuff. It, it's, it's, some of it is very gentle or very fragile, excuse me. Um, so the, the back wall is the easiest part to put together first. Uh, I made the mistake of thinking those individual white pieces actually go on the inside or on the outside, but they actually go on the outside near the door. And I found that out later. Um, I, I, I didn't put the little countertop on because the countertop is going to keep that middle piece snug. That is the last piece you want to put on. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting each of the individual pieces in, slotting it together and making sure I have everything together well. I did not glue any of this stuff except for the individual vents and the doors and the little piece that goes underneath, that little H section that goes underneath. Um, the This is the point where I realized that the individual, uh, the outside like slots that hold the sign go together on the back of it. So you, you kind of piece those together with the grates and they hold the grates on. Now on the top of that, there's a little half moon kind of a hook and that's where the sign goes. Unfortunately, I did not get that piece, but that's not a problem. I sent an email to Art of War and, you know, the like I said the, before, the owner's a really nice guy. I'm sure it's not going to be a problem to replace, replace that piece, but um, it's going to have a sign just like the big billboards. Uh, so... I got that all together and I put all the individual like the little grates together with a little bit of glue, put the piece on top. And as soon as I get the signs, I'll put the signs on as well. 
Uh, the last piece that I put on was the little countertop area because the countertop kind of keeps everything snug and secure. Um, once that's done, there we go. Street vendor, get a little noodle vendor or whatnot. So the, uh, you know, once I get the acrylic pieces that I need will be done. Now, last but not least, we have the individual light posts. Once again, I put now these I put together and painted white while they were together. And then I just painted the bottom blue. Each of the individual little yellow light pieces, I, I went back and used just a tad of super glue. Not a whole lot because you will be able to see it if you put too much in there just to hold it together. And voila. With that done, I have to say I am looking forward to getting this terrain on the table. I have enjoyed it immensely. Putting together, painting, it looks amazing. The owner was a really nice guy. I appreciate him taking the time to sit and talk with me, and uh, or at least email me in this particular case. Um, but uh, if you have a chance, pick up this terrain. It's worth it. You know, the it, it's worth supporting a small business in our hobby, and it is definitely worth the time. You know that it takes to put it all together. Uh, if you have liked what you've seen, make sure you like and subscribe. Join me on Patreon and on Discord as well. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all of you.